we're talking about contrition. S since contrition is the most important act of the penitent, let's examine its nature and discover exactly what it is. The Council of Trent defines contrition as sorrow of heart and detestation for sin committed with the resolve to sin no more. Sorrow of heart and detestation or hatred of sin with the idea that you're going to sin no more. Now, the virtue of penance, and we mentioned virtue of penance way back when we started this, um, is defined as a supernatural moral virtue because it is a virtue, virtue of penance. So it's a supernatural moral virtue allied to justice, which inclines the sinner to detest his sin because it's an offense against God, and it prompts him firmly to resolve amendment and to make satisfaction. Now there's a lot of parts to that, but notice that some of it is exactly the same as the definition for contrition. It inclines the sinner to detest his sin because it's an offense against God and prompts him to firmly resolve not to sin anymore and to make satisfaction. The reason these two definitions are similar, though not exactly the same, is because contrition is an exercise of the virtue of, of penance. An act of contrition is an act of penance, of the virtue of penance. So this virtue then is necessary for forgiveness. Remember that penance is a supernatural moral virtue allied to justice. So let's take a look at that part first. The virtue of penance is supernatural. What does that mean? It's supernatural because it's infused into the soul by God. You can't get it yourself. It's a virtue. It's infused into your soul by God. It can't be acquired by ourselves without, without his aid. Neither can we exercise it except with the help of actual grace given by the Holy Ghost. So right away you see because it's a supernatural virtue, we need God's help. We need His grace. It's His grace that helps us to do this. Now we'll come back to that in a minute. Penance is also a moral virtue. That is, it's a virtue that inclines the will. We're going to keep using this word over and over again. The will. It inclines the will to sorrow for having offended God. Lastly, penance is allied to the virtue of justice. Why? Because justice inclines the will to render unto others what is their due. That's justice, when you give everyone what is owed to them. But by sin, you, you took something from God. You stole something. You deprive God of the honor and glory that is his due. And penance, therefore, as an act of justice, means that you have to give it back. You have to make reparation. You have to satisfy God because you've offended him and you've violated his rights. Rendering back to God in as far as we are able that honor and glory that we took from him. With that in mind, let's look at the definition of contrition again. Contrition then is sorrow for sin, but it's supernatural, but it's a supernatural act of the will by which we detest the sins we've committed and are heartily sorry for them with the firm purpose of sinning no more. So there are four important parts to that definition. First, it's an act of the will. Contrition is not a motion. It's an act of the will. We're going to say that over and over again. 
people get that confused. It's an act of the will. It's hatred for sin. It's sorrow for sin, because now we hate it. And we make a perp we have a firm purpose to sin no more. So it's an act of the will. Since sin is an act of the will by which we turn away from God, contrition must be an act of the same will. It's a free act of the will by which under the inspiration of grace, remember because it is supernatural, under the inspiration of grace and from supernatural motives, we turn from our sins that we have committed and turn back to God. It's hatred of sin. This is the first step toward contrition. We mean by, we mean that we have to judge our sins that we have committed as the greatest evils because they have attacked and offended God. Sin is the greatest evil in the world. Not losing your job, not the death of a loved one, not a pandemic. The greatest evil in the world is sin. The consequence is to is a deliberate aversion or turning from them by our will. We by we we now hate them and we turn away we use our will to turn away from them and turn back to God. Unless we hate and detest sins which we have been the cause of losing God's friendship, we can't hope to regain that friendship. If you don't hate what you've done to him, how can you expect him to forgive you? Thirdly, it's sorrow for sin. Hatred of sin is accompanied by sorrow for sin. If you hate it as the greatest evil, you will then be sorry for what you have done. You've lost God's friendship. Our detestation of our sins as the greatest evils should make us regret that we've committed sin. And this sorrow has to be inspired by supernatural motives. Remember, again, this is from grace. It's supernatural. It's an act of virtue, so it's supernatural. And now we're going to get to those motives in a minute. They have to be supernatural. That is... Um, founded on God's goodness and holiness, not on ourselves. We're sorry because we've offended God, not because it has hurt us. So what are those supernatural motives? Um, the goodness and holiness of God whom we've offended, the foulness of sin, the loss of heaven, the fear of hell. All of those are supernatural motives, reasons to be sorry for our sins. Natural motives would be, we're sorry because we lost our job. We, we stole, we got caught, we lost our job. Um, we lost our reputation. People now know us as to be a liar or a thief or whatever. Uh, we've lost friends, we've lost our health. Uh, we're going to be put where we have to go to jail, civil punishment. These are not reasons, these are not supernatural motives. And therefore, if you're sorry for these reasons, your sin will not be forgiven. Being sorry, again, is an act of the will and not an emotion. You will not necessarily, you may, but you may not, you will not necessarily feel sorry. By that I mean you're, you won't break down in tears, you won't um, be beating your breast, you, you know, you, no. It's an act of the will. It's in your mind. You know in your mind and in your heart that God has been offended. You know that you shouldn't have offended him. You know that he loves you. And you're sorry because you've offended him. 
You want his friendship back. Again, it's a, it's from the will, not an emotion. And then you have to have a firm purpose of amendment. There is no con real contrition without it. It's a resolve to avoid such sins in the future. We can't truly be sorry for our sins if we're not willing to give them up. It's no more than if, uh, it is more than just a wish. It has to be a resolution, a determination on your part. Again, you have to will it. You just, you can't say, I'll try. That's, that's a cop out. You have at this moment, and it comes down to that, at this moment, you are sorry for your sins. And you will never commit this sin again. You know that you're weak, and therefore you're going to pray and, and go to the sacraments and whatever you need. You, you're resolving at this moment to do whatever you need to do to make yourself stronger, that you can overcome these temptations. That you're going, you're resolving at this moment to stay away from those occasions that lead you into sin. This determination has to be both firm and universal. Firm means that you have, at this moment, the determination to 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 sin no more. It doesn't mean that you'll never sit again. We're weak. We, because of the original sin, we have concupiscence. It's easier to be bad than to be good. It will take great effort on your part, especially if this sin has become a vice, a habit, a habit f toward evil. It will take great work on your part, but at this moment, you have a firm resolution to, to not sin again. Uh, and you're determined to do whatever it takes to avoid that. And you actually need to think about what you will have to do to avoid it, to give up this friendship, to not go to that place, to change certain things in your life. And then it also has to be universal. You're not just sorry for this mortal sin. You're sorry for all mortal sins, and you're going to avoid all mortal sin in the future. As far as possible, you're going to avoid all mortal sin. Yes, you'll work on this one, but other occasions come up, you'll, you'll avoid those as well. Now, what are the signs of a firm purpose of amendment? First of all, you plan to make genuine efforts to improve, such as vigilance, watching over your senses, over your lifestyle, prayer. You won't succeed without prayer. Reception of the sacraments more frequently especially penance in the Holy Eucharist. You need the graces of the sacraments to strengthen you. Second, you will avoid those persons, places, or things which you know from, from past will, you're, you will experience um, temptations that will lead you again into those same sins. If you can't avoid the occasion of sin, then, for example, maybe it's your boss. You can't avoid, he's, he has, um, he's a temptation and you don't want to lose your job. Uh, he invites you out to drink and you think if I, you don't go along, you might, whatever. If you can't avoid the temptation, you can't get away from the boss, or you go to school with this kid and you, he's always around, you can't avoid him, um, then you need to strengthen yourself by prayer and reception of the sacraments. And thirdly, 
if we have a sincere, make a sincere effort to improve and to avoid those occasions of sin, your life will change. It only follows that if you avoid those things in your life that are causing you to sin, your life will change. Those who fall frequently due to weakness have to strengthen that will by, it, by exercising it. It's a spiritual muscle. How do you exercise it? Self-denial. Especially in little things. You don't have to do great penances. Just little things. Um, giving up something that you want to do in favor of an act of charity for someone else. Um, eating something that you don't like to eat. Not making a, not voicing sarcasm or making a complaint or making a joke at someone else's expense. Small sacrifices, little self-denials, those exercises of the will. They make your will stronger and when you are tempted, your will will be strong enough to help resist. The best means is to follow the advice of your confessor. He will tell you what to do if you ask him. What are the qualities of contrition? To be genuine, contrition must be interior, supernatural, universal, and sovereign. Interior means it's an act of the will springing from the heart and not from your lips. You're not just saying you're sorry. You're not going through the motions. You mean it. It's supernatural when it's prompted by God's grace and supernatural motives. All right, well, you say, well, how do I get God's grace? You ask for it. You pray for it. Before, when you, before you end, begin examining your conscience, you should pray. Pray for God's grace to enlighten you. Pray for God to give you, make you sorry for your sins. God won't deny it to you. You have a right to it. So he won't withhold it. It's one of those graces that's out on the table since baptism. Because you were baptized, you have the right now to go to the sacrament of penance. It's on the table. You have to pick it up. That means you have to ask for it. You have to pray for it. Don't just expect it to fall from heaven like rain on the earth. No, you have to pray for it. Praying shows God that you want it. And he won't withhold it regardless. He will not. You have a right to it. It's universal. That includes all unforgiven mortal sins. You're not just sorry for these mortal sins. You're sorry for every mortal sin you've ever committed. And sovereign means it's supreme. That means um, we're sorry for sins because they are evil. And we recognize sin as the greatest evil. And appreciate and we appreciate the sacrament of penance and and our because we recognize it as, as so evil we have this hatred of sin it is again an intell intellectual act of the will contrition is it's not an emotional feeling you go into the sacrament of penance with your mind and your heart in gear not not your feelings you may come out weeping because you're now so relieved of that you've gotten it off your your conscience but those are graces those are different graces and we don't have to feel something to have achieved it with God so what kinds of contrition are there there's two kinds perfect and imperfect both are essential. Um, both are, oh, excuse me. Both are alike in their essentials. 
both of them are inspired by grace, actual grace. They're both based on supernatural motives. They both express sorrow for sin and hatred of it. And they both require a firm purpose of amendment. So how are they different? They're different in those supernatural motives. Remember, we said what the supernatural motives are that inspire contrition are, are pertaining to God. If you have imperfect contrition, which is is all that's necessary in the sacrament of, of in the sacrament of penance, you only need imperfect contrition. Imperfect contrition means that you're sorry because you're going to go to hell. You're going to be punished. You're going to lose heaven. You're, in other words, you are part of this equation. You're sorry, yeah, because you've offended God, but you're also sorry, but because you've offended God, now you're going to be punished. You're like the kid who's going to be punished. You're sorry. You apologize to your parents because you know you're going to, you, you're going to get spanked or you're going to be grounded or whatever. You're going to be punished. You're not really sorry that you did the deed. You're sorry because of the punishment. And that's a perfect contrition. But that's all that's required in the sacrament of penance. To be sorry because you're going to be punished. Perfect contrition is an act of love. Um, outside of the sacrament of confession, Imperfect contrition will take away venial sins, but it won't take away mortal sins. But perfect contrition will. Because perfect contrition is a perfect act of love. You're sorry for sin because you've offended God. You love him. You know that he loves you. And you're sorry because you've offended him. You've lost his friendship. That's perfect contrition and perfect contrition will forgive mortal sins outside of the sacrament of confession um, and it will also take away uh, um, temporal punishment so if you commit a mortal sin the first thing you should do once you've committed it and you realize what you've done and you're sorry for what you've done you should make a perfect act of contrition tell God you're sorry because you've offended him again it's not impossible a perfect act of contrition is very easy you love God you've offended him and you're sorry because you've offended him in that moment your your mortal sin is gone you still have to confess it. But if you die between now and the getting to the confessional, it's been taken care of. So why not wait to go to confession? Because in the meantime, you're also losing. Again, remember, you cannot merit unless you're in sanctifying grace. You can, do, you can merit. You can gain natural merit, which will be rewarded in this world. But you can't gain supernatural merit without sanctifying grace. So once you have made that perfect act of contrition and your mortal sin is gone, you can again gain merit. So, yes, get rid of the mortal sin as quickly as possible. Go to confession when, as soon as you can. But in the meantime, don't waste time. Don't waste your energy. Continue to gain merit. Now we also talked about um, people of the Protestant persuasion who were validly baptized because some of their baptisms are valid. The church recognizes some of their baptisms. That's why when they come over to the Catholic Church they have to be baptized conditionally in, just in case it wasn't done correctly. But the church recognizes and therefore allows marriages between Catholics and non-Catholics, um, Protestants and, and what they call mixed marriages, Catholics and Protestants who've been baptized. So 
their baptism took away original sin and gave them sanctifying grace. And if they go through their whole life, as I explained one before, if they go through their life and never commit a mortal sin, they're good. But supposing they do commit a mortal sin, they don't have access to the sacrament of penance the way you do. But if they make a perfect act of contrition, if they're sorry for the sins that they committed because they love God, those sins are taken away. And they can go to heaven. Perfect contrition for a person in sanctifying grace remits venial sin. It increases sanctifying grace. We can't make an act of perfect contrition without God's grace assisting us. But God in his goodness has made us to love him. And he will never refuse that grace if we ask for it. People sometimes think that they must feel great love for God and a great sorrow for having offended him. And this is an error. It is not a matter of feelings. It's a matter of the will of the intellect, of the heart. Don't get emotion and devotion mixed up. It's sufficient to detest sin because it offends God, whom we love.